Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lihula Superfina. And I'm your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. In this pot episode, we're going to talk about Tomo-chan is a girl. We talked about Tomo-chan is a girl earlier this season, and we just watched the last episode, episode 13, which I was really happy about because when episode 12 aired, I was not satisfied with the ending and i was told that this was the last episode i was like no way this is not the last episode like it, mm, not satisfying no way they kind of left the hanging I kinda, well i i kind of felt like it could have ended there just because it felt like the build-up was to that point and that was it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but then I kind of felt a little short change. Like, I felt like there was a whole lot more that was in between that kind of got cut out. And then ultimately, you know, between reading the manga, going on Reddit to the Tomonchan Reddit thread, uh, th- there are people that are literally split on that because a lot was cut out. There's a lot of content mm-hmm. that was cut out mm-hmm. that could have been added. And I think the show literally could have gone for you know, two seasons at tops, but it pulled a Horimiya and it gave us one season, wrapped everything up in that, but then it might pull another Horimiya and give us the lost chapters. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Horimiya did do that. With Tomo Shad as a girl, when we, I watched episode 12, I did know that there were things left out. And like you said, it did feel like it was building up to that part where they confessed to each other, where they finally, acknowledge and address that they have mutual feelings for each other and yeah it was satisfying it's like okay we finally got to that part cool but i also knew that they went on a date yeah <laughs> and that's why i was like they're just gonna end it there there was af- there was stuff afterwards like what what and then episode 13 aired Mm-hmm. i got my date sort of and can we give it up to the uh, the cast, the English cast, for doing like a phenomenal job in just selling the emotions? I mean, throughout the whole season, but particularly yeah. this episode, they they really sold like stuff that a lot of us go through when you know we encounter our first love. The you know the fear of hey, do I confess? Does that change everything? And mm-hmm. you know, will we still be as cool now as we were then? you know, before feelings got involved, it, it was a very realistic depiction. And I thought they did a very good job uh, vocally, you know, um, portraying that. So. I agree, especially with Tomo, where some people would say that she was being a little obnoxious, how she was not satisfied by... Yeah, she was Junisho. completely obnoxious to me. Well, to you... She's seen because Dooney Show is being so straightforward and sincere with his feelings. He was totally being like a gentleman. He was expressing how much he was in love. Well, not in love, but he really cared for her to the point where he's We're like, in oh. love. Well, he didn't say in love yet. What did he say he was He in- did say that. Oh, yeah. He did say in love. We watched this. <laughs> Shush. 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 Well, I mean, like. Okay, so the reason why I said, like, not in love is because even though he was in love with her, he didn't really go forward with it. He wasn't 100% because there was some obstacles going on, but we'll go over that later on. What I mean is he was so, what is it called, infatuated with her Mm -hmm. that he was complimenting her. He was just awed by her beauty and her femininity and just her being Tomo, not even being feminine, just being her. And Tomo was like flustered. She thought he was one upping her and she thought she needed to one up him. So she was doing some stuff, like kind of teasing. I was like, you know, we can totally watch this mature movie. What? Why? You, you can't handle it. You can't handle the romance, the hot and heavy. So she was trying to like, what's it called? Goad him. And yeah. then they watched a movie, and she was flustered, and she saw how calm he was, and she was getting frustrated with that. So it's sort of like, have you ever seen those scenes in anime where, kind of like uh, Kaguya, Love is War, where they try to make each other 
uh, confess their love. Well, in this case, they're trying to make each other kind of lose their cool because they're so enraptured. You, like, you had to bring up that show. That damn show pisses me off because you know how much of a tease that is every season we get progress and then, yep, season in, next season, we reset. But that's like a really good example where they're trying to get the other one to... Wouldn't Hori Mia have been a better comparison? No, 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 no. Not in this case with, uh, with Tomo trying to compete with Junichiro. Because she okay, was, that's an extreme example. Yes, yes, yes. But that's a good extreme example. And what I'm talking about is there are sometimes those anime couples where they know one or the other likes each other, but they don't want to be the first one to confess because the one who confesses first loses. Well, what are you losing? I don't know. <laughs> It's not a big deal. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. It's not a big deal if you confess first. It just means you had the balls to do it. You know? You the balls, the cojones, the chichitas. The olos. Okay, you went Hawaiian. I went. Yeah. Anyways, yes. <laughs> Besides that. And what I liked about Tomo is that they already passed that. They confessed to each other, but they're still, well, more like Tomo. I think she's naturally competitive. She was still trying to make Junichiro lose his cool. I think she wanted to have that sense of, ooh, I'm a woman. I've got him to lose his words. I got him to lose his cool. But no, Junichiro is like, mm -mm, woman, I love you. You beautiful. I want to just kiss your feet. He didn't go that far, though. <laughs> Okay, I can perfectly relate to Zinichiro in that situation because I've been in situations, not with you, you know, y'all already know the nice story of... I say. Okay, y'all already know the story of how her and I got together. So, I mean, she wasn't complicated. But I've been in relationships with other women where it's like they are goading me mm -hmm. to make the move mm -hmm. and... I make the move, and then when I start expressing openly how I feel about them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then apparently it's a problem. Oh. It's like, they're acting like how Tomo was, and I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> what just, okay, you're gorgeous, you're cute, I want to kiss you, I want to go on dates, I want to hold hands, it's like, I don't want to the PDA, and that's why I got to the point where I don't want PDA either. <laughs> Your roses ain't always sm smelling rosily either. Speaking of PDA, Tomo totally wanted to kiss him. And she I think she wanted him to make the move. She wanted him to make the move. She's trying to set the move, the situation, first with the movie, kind of plant the idea in his head. And she ended up getting flustered from watching the movie. And Junichiro was just looking at it so intently. And, I was thinking, and he was just like... Like, what do you think he was thinking about when he was watching it? I, my assumption was he was analyzing how the couple was interacting with each other and how they kind of got more physical. And maybe he was analyzing, okay, when can we get physical? What stage are we at? How far ahead in the future can we get there? Because, you know, we're baby stepping right now. But he's thinking about the future. He already knows he's going to marry her. It's only... When are things going to be done? And I thought Tomo was being kind of aggressive. Like, I was surprised that she wanted to smooch him. Because they were talking about kissing, right? And she was totally open about it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because I'm looking at the situation. He basically, he gave um his thoughts on it like i mean he was completely because he's a very straightforward shooter mm -hmm. but you also got to look at junichiro as a character like the whole thing like from how he was when he was younger to where he's at now he never really thought he was going to be in this situation he never thought no. he even he even said it. he never thought he was going to ever be able to say or express that or be interested in anything like that because he just never thought he would meet someone like that. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for him, and I can completely relate when you meet someone that's, you know, puts you in that position where he's like, damn, okay, yo, 
I might want to try that with you. Then you're kind of taking a little bit of back. I mean, I look, I was that way with you. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, good things, good things <laughs> that, you know, was a, a complete first for me. And I'm just like, okay, this could be the first woman I can actually shower with affection, show love to, spoil, because I love to spoil. You do. And not have a negative consequence of that. Like, mm -hmm. that was something that I never thought I would have because I always had women that, you know, there was always something. They're never happy, always looking for drama, always trying to fight, all, some kind of stupid shit. Sounds frustrating. It is. It's very frustrating. That shit's hella irritating. You know? You know what it's like when you just want to be like, I love you, and it's like, but how much do you love me? Do you really love me? I just said I love you. Speaking of frustration, you think Junichiro was being straightforward because while he was kind of confused and conflicted with his feelings for Tomo, he was getting frustrated with himself and of the course. situation they were in. Of course. And now that they got everything straightened out, he's like, I am ready to be true to my feelings. No indecisiveness. I know I like her. Now he was old Bird King commercial. I am man, hear me roar. <laughs> he was like, no, I love this woman. And, you know, whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it. I got to challenge her that. I don't know about that one, though. But you know what? You know, I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just that was just the situation of what it was. I mean, mm -hmm. I again, I can identify with Jinichiro because I've been there. More ways than one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I know what that's like. And then after the movie, they go to like a family restaurant. They're talking, hanging out. And then Junichiro gives Tomo a gift. And uh, I was surprised. Well, not really, because I read the manga. But anyways. <laughs> surprised. Well, surprised. Not really. <laughs> not really, though. No. I mean, kind of. Like this much. Not really. Small kind. Small kind. Small kind. <laughs> and uh, it's in a small box you're thinking oh what did he get her and it was jewelry so he totally knows that she's trying to be more feminine he is acknowledging and he knows that she has short hair so the earrings they would show and it has her initial t oh that was so adorable and when she put them on she was like how's it look and he's like i'm so glad i got this for her she was like radiating and glowing and he was like Oh, He's like, been there. score, good choice. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad I got this for her. And then the bigger surprise was Tomo's gift for him because he wasn't expecting it. And it ended up being, you know, those cliches, handmade scarves, mufflers, whatever. It totally looked like it was handmade and she wasn't the greatest at it, but she still made it. And she still gave it to him. She made it with love and Junichiro knew, and as soon as he opened it, he put it on. He's like, he's like, mine. My, my woman made that. He was proud of it. Mm -hmm. He's like, I am loved. My woman gave this to me. I'm going to brag about it. See this? See this? Oh, you're looking at this? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ask me about it. Ask me. <laughs> he totally had that look. He totally had that look. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm looking at how long we've been recording, which is 14 minutes. And I was like, yeah, we can do this in 15 minutes. You're like, half an hour. You know what? Men, listen to your partner. <laughs> Word of advice. Happy wife, happy life. Oh, really? He said it. Everybody, you're all witnesses. <laughs> mm -hmm. Clip that, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting plenty of TikTok footage of this. I'm over here like, oh, that was a good point. Clip. <laughs> and then Junichiro and Tomo, they're walking. It's getting late. Junichiro is like, oh, it's getting late. We should go home. And Tomo does, can I stay with you longer? She got a grip. That's the Hawaii farm girls be. She wanted to stay with him longer. She wanted to go to his house. They go to his house. And then Tomo says, oh, your parents aren't home? Set up for stuff. 
but the beautiful thing is they're so innocent that they would never go mine in the gutter. No. <laughs> I would. I have. I do. But, you know, that's me. Yeah, so the scene... That's not her. Totally She's an angel. Dead. She's got... You see his halo? This is the most innocent woman here. Don't mind the NVIDIA broadcast blur effect. I'm pointing at this woman right here. She is so innocent. Mm, I am. Some people <laughs> don't believe that. <laughs> There's no hesitation on you say that. Don't you remember when I first started streaming and people were like so surprised by like how I wasn't a potty mouth and they're like, how? He doesn't swear. I swear a no. lot. No. It's not in my nature. It's not. And so people thought I was like faking it. <laughs> Anyways, so they totally made it look like something naughty was going to happen at Junichiro's place. And if you saw Horimiya, you would think, oh, is it going to be like that scene where it was raining in Horimiya? No, it wasn't. Well, and that's a whole other thing is like in Horimiya, I didn't know that they was, I mean, that was clapping cheeks. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was happening in Horimiya. And it's just like, because look, now, now look, you gotta hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. So this whole situation in Horimiya, basically when you on, or you're watching stuff on Funimation or you're watching it on Crunchyroll, they skip the end credits. And Horimiya <laughs> has a lot of stuff that happens. There's a lot of shit that happens. They got post credits. Post credits. And I didn't know. You know, some cheeks was clapped and, you know, <laughs> some meat was beat. I didn't know. And then I read the manga. I was like, oh, they cut that out. And then I watched post credit. Now it's in there. <laughs> he beat them cheeks. You had to look for it. You had to look for it. Mm -hmm. They did not leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> they were true to the story. So in... Toma Child is a girl. They're in Junichiro's room and they're so innocent. They're sitting separately from each other. And Junichiro is like, want to play video games? And Toma's being so shy. She's Which like, no. Completely goes back to how much of a nerd he is. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I'm a nerd. So I'm just saying, it's it, it was really telling. And it was cute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when Junichiro asked Tomo if she wants to play video games, she's like, no. You could tell Junichiro was kind of disappointed. And it kind of almost hinted that their relationship is changing. They're not being friends. Because that was one of Junichiro's and Tomo's, uh, was it called, worries that they weren't going to be friends anymore. Like their whole relationship was going to change. That was more her than him. Yeah, it was more her. And so when she's like, no, it's like, oh, no, their relationship is changing. But she was more nervous. That's why. You no, know, you got to do is pop in some ghosts and goblins and there you go. I mean, that's what we did in Diablo 3. <laughs> and then it's sort of like Tomo was waiting for Junichiro to make a move. And then she just got frustrated. Okay, I got to ask you a question. Well, Real talk. Were you waiting on me to make a move? No. God, no goddamn hesitation. Get your get yourself a woman off a farm like her. Well, I learned from experience. If you want something and you want something to happen, you can't just always wait for the other person. It's like they can't read your mind. Get yourself a Hawaiian woman. I'm telling you. And another thing, I remember you saying that you had a hard time reading me. And so, oh, completely. Yeah. So, <laughs> there's a lot of situations like that. And if you don't take initiative, action, and such, and you're disappointed at the end, that's on you. That's <laughs> okay. not on them. For that's those, on yourself. For those who don't know, I made no effort whatsoever to pursue this woman here. Mm -mm. None. I came off of really bad relationships and I'd like, I would look at it. I'm like, I think she's hidden on me. I think she likes me. I ain't doing the goddamn thing. <laughs> nah, she want me. She gonna have to come get me. I'm a prize. I'm king. I'm like king off of blue lock. I'm the king. Treat yourself. <laughs> and then, you know, it's all cool. Cause she ain't super Nintendo. We, I come over to her apartment or a condo. We play what, Super, super Ghosts and, and goblins. goblins. Oh, my God. I was, look, 
I fell in love with that woman when I saw she had that. She was playing it because I, I don't know any woman that plays video games the way she does. And I'm not trying to be sexist or, or anything like that. I'm not saying that women don't game, but it's really look. I'm. I don't know how old am I. I'm. I'm. I'm in my 30s somewhere around there. Uh, so I'm not used to seeing or meeting women that like to game. I'm just not. And especially old school stuff that I grew up with. And then, like, not only that, but she had old Genesis games, old NES games. I'm like, word? And we playing that? We just <laughs> diving in and doing all that? You know, just can't make it past level two. Barely got past level one in Super Ghosts yeah, and Goblins. I was like, frustrating. it was super frustrating. But I was like, yo, she determined. I was like, man, this woman, somebody got to put her on lock. And then myself was like, how about you? I was like, no, <laughs> I ain't taking that chance. <laughs> I got my heart broken so many damn times. I ain't doing that shit again. Well, Tom and Junichiro, they took she, the chance. She, she just. They took a chance and they ended up in Junichiro's bedroom. And what happened? Tomo almost made a move. She asked to sit on his bed. She sat on his bed, and Junichiro's like, "What?" And then, what did Tomo ask? She asked him to kiss her. What? And he's like, he's so flustered, but it looked like he wanted to take that opportunity. He was like, "Ready?" He looked like he was flustered, like he he thought it, but he wasn't gonna do it because you know he wanted to take baby steps with her. And then she gave him the green light. And the anxiety is real, people. Mm -hmm. It looked like he was going to take that opportunity. And it really looked like he was going to like just grab her and give her a big smooch. And he ended up punching himself. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. Even Tom was like, what? Like, she was ready for that smooch, too. Like That was such a mood killer. <laughs> and then so this is where it starts with Tomo's frustration so she was all ready you know she prepped herself she made herself look all pretty she went to his house she sat on his bed she even gave him the green light saying do you want to kiss me and he punches himself and then he tells her that they're not boyfriend girlfriend and she thought they were mm -hmm. She automatically thought after confessing that their boyfriend girlfriend, which usually is when they say, please take care of me. That usually means that they're going out. Yeah, when he said that, I was like, homie, that's an L. Mm. Like, you gonna have to work your way out of that one. Cause like, mm. For the whole time after they confessed, she thought they were boyfriend girlfriend. It turns out they weren't. At least to Junichiro. And then he explains it's because he has to defeat her dad. And then he wants to, was it traditionally, or he wants to... Ask her out. But there's a term for it, like sincerely, sincerely ask her out, like a, like yeah, a man. Tra uh, traditionally. Yeah. So he wants to do that. And she's like, homie, I thought we went past that. She's like, I was going to ask you out. <laughs> And then she got flustered with that. No, but uh, but we're skipping ahead here because um, there were points like the the whole um, her getting frustrated with the uh, fact that he because when he had to he went and asked the dad if he could ask her out, mm -hmm. and when he asked the dad, basically the dad's thing was you got to beat me mm -hmm. to be able to ask her out now. Okay, for those who don't know, if you're not a traditionalist, I'm going to break this down for you. Fathers, especially fathers that have daughters, they want to know that you, as a man, can protect and provide and make their daughter happy. Mm -hmm. Because the first man... And, and and don't get weird or get it twisted. The first man a woman loves, typically, is a father. Mm -hmm. Not in that kind of way, but that's the first love. And so, he sets the example of what a man should be. And 
if uh, someone comes up like, hey, I, I want to date your daughter, I'm going to ask them out. Men were territorial. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know Bad Boys 2. We all know that scene from Bad Boys 2. So you got to prove that you're someone that they can entrust their daughter with. Mm-hmm. And that's what that was. And Jeanitro doubted he, he it didn't click in his head. And so when he was kind of like wishy-washy about it, that pissed Tomo off. She's very upset about that mm-hmm. because she already knew, even if she didn't know specifically what it was, she knew he was just being a dumb boy for all into <laughs> just, let's just call a spade a spade. He's being dumb. So he, you know, that's what that situation was. And I, I understood it and I laughed because I was like, yeah, this is realistic. I don't really think I've seen an, an, an anime or read a manga where we've had that type of situation where they incorporate something that's that real. Mm-hmm. You know, that was something that I was really impressed that they were able to incorporate into the show. Now, whether you care about traditionalism or modernism or whatever, you know, gender roles, we're not here to debate all that. I'm just saying what it was. And I was impressed that they were able to incorporate. That was the first that I've seen an anime do. And I'm not saying it's the first one to ever do it. It's the first one I've seen to do it. And I was quite impressed because it was handled very well. So when they got to the part where he was like, I don't know what to do. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. And she got mad and she just stopped talking to him. Mm-hmm. Th- stopped talking to her dad. She stopped talking to... um Misa Zoo and, and Carol. Carol for two weeks over what the winter break. Mm-hmm. That's when everyone knew shit was real. That's when it finally actually, no, it didn't. It, it kind of clicked in his head that he needed or Jenny Tro's head that he needed to do something. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then it came to a point where the mom kind of had to nudge him along and also nudge the dad into submission, submissiveness. And then when it got to the point where he finally made the decision that he was going to challenge the dad for the right to have Tomo mm-hmm. and not just to date her to have her in the entirety of the scope of that that includes because obviously they're going to get married obviously they ain't going with nobody else they grew up together they're you know and I'm gonna say this I never personally experienced growing up and falling in love with one person you know, as a teenager, mm. let me qualify that. Don't look at me like that. Retract them crazy eyes. Excuse you. Loosen that titterbug. <laughs> I'm, she does not have a titterbug. For those who don't know, that's a Hawaiian term. That's, that's what we use out here. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I've never experienced as a teenager, because you know I, I, I grew up very differently. I never experienced growing up with a partner who started off as a friend and became a lover. And then we just dated for stretches of years, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I, I mean, I can understand it. I can understand that that's cool, but we know people that have had that and I'm happy for them. Hell, I wish that I did. I think about it. If I had met you like 20 years ago, she young though. She ain't nothing but eighteen. But if I met her twenty years ago, um, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, she'd be the woman that I would be with for the rest of my life. That's how much I love this woman. Look, we don't really have a lot of drama. She's and I'm I'm gonna say this and broadcast this to the world. I love you, Lehua. You are the love of my life, and in the sense of. You're not high strung. She's not high maintenance. Even though she get a little snippy here and there, I get pretty scissory myself, you know. But at the end of the day, we love each other. We can talk it out. We can work it out. And I've never had that with anyone else. And I wish that I hadn't met you back then. Aww. You know, to experience that. So it's just. I sometimes envy people that have that capability, Mm. you know, and 
ultimately, I can't keep envying them because, I mean, the end result is we're we're married. We've been married now almost 10 years. Or are we closing in on it? We round it up to 10 years. Wow, three more years. You know, like I got a dog right now saying, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, that that's just something like I, being able to have that feeling and, and knowing that those two characters will always be together. It's kind of like they're basically if you want to know what they are going to end up look uh, end up like, look at her parents. Tomo's parents. Yeah. Mm. And that's exactly it. Although a little smidge of a difference is I think she'd be more like her dad. Oh, sure. For sure. Yeah. And less like her mom. Because you look at Jeichiro, he is more of someone who's trying to keep up with her. Oh, yeah. The facade of the cool guy, the fighter, all this stuff. He did all of this just to be with her. So, do I think he would pull back after they're married and have a family and all that? Slightly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can totally see her taking over the dojo. So with all of this talk about the future, it seemed like Junichiro was worried that he was going to jeopardize that because one of his worries about the dad challenging him, the dad said that Junichiro had to beat him in the fight. Junichiro was worried that he wouldn't win because he knew that the dad was really strong. I mean, Tomo's dad taught Junichiro how to fight. Everything. You know, he was his teacher, his master, and he knew it was going to be a long shot. And one of his worries was that, what if he never beats the dad? And it seemed like he wasn't even going to try to beat the dad until he was confident and not frustrated Tomo. She's like, bruh, just fight him. Fight for me! Fight for us! Win, lose, or draw, she was going to accept it either way. Because regardless of whatever the dad decided, she was going to... Her decision Mm -hmm. was going to overrule all of it. Which is something... It came back to Carol... Not Carol. um, um, Misuzu was the one who brought it up. Is like, are these two men going to decide what you want? You know, and that had nothing to do with, like, again, modernism, traditionalism, or feminism, or anything like that. It was literally... Is this what you want? Do you want it? Are you going to pursue it? And if you're going to pursue it, then are you willing to do what it takes to have what you want? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Do you want this? If you want it, go get it. Right? Isn't that what I said earlier? I said it! She did. I just wanted (laughs) a roundabout way of saying it. So that really lit a fire in Tomo because she kind of was lost and such. But when Misuzu made her realize what it was she was feeling and thinking, she kind of needed to talk a lot, talk it out with Misuzu. It lit a fire in Tomo. And Tomo went for her man. She went to cheer him on to beat her dad. And she's like, if you can't beat your beat my dad on your own, we'll beat him together. And at the challenge... Junichiro brought Tomo's mom because the dad gets weak whenever he sees the mom. I don't know if they show that in the anime, but it has been pointed out that whenever she's around, when she's watching him, he gets all weak because he's still in love with her. Like his legs get turned to jelly. (laughs) I I have that feeling with you. Oh. I mean, I'll, look, I, I don't often say how I feel. But I think this is the most I've openly said a lot of things. She understands we have telepathic communication. He's being really sweet, even though I was a little snippy with him earlier today. I she was hangry. <laughs> I was tired and hangry. Yeah, she needed food. You ever seen that meme where you see the the woman looks like? The angry dog with the teeth bearing. That was her. As soon as she... I made homemade Cuban tacos. Cuban... No, no. Not Cuban. Dominican tacos. I made those. And then she was like the happy puppy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it wasn't yeah. that bad. So anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, so the fight... 
Uh, yeah, so with the fight, uh, Janitro was getting waxed. His butt was getting waxed all across that floor. The dad was feeling bad for him. He's like, you want to take a break? You want to, like, just stop tonight? He was giving him multiple outs, and Janitro didn't take any of them. Mm -hmm. And in that fight is when he realized what I was saying earlier about what he, what his dad or her dad was wanting of him to be able to prove to him. And when he was able to finally do that and punch the dad in the face, he was able to finally score the win. But then the dad and his competitive nature rolls up to strike. And then the mob came with the hammer of God in her five fingers and slapped the shit out of him and was like, enough. N U F F. That's her word. Nah. <laughs> and he yielded because he ain't, he ain't gonna he's not gonna challenge that woman. Well, speaking of that, before Junichiro punched was able to land a punch on Tomo's dad, he was thinking, "Oh, this is what Tomo's dad wants me to think of. He wants me to think that." Get that feeling that I want, that need to protect my family, my woman, because the dad wants me to protect his daughter. And this goes back to what you were talking about, mm -hmm. where the father wants someone that will be able to protect his child mm -hmm. because he himself protected her. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really endearing and, like you said, realistic that... Junichiro was talking, thinking about that, actually thinking about that he wants to protect the woman he loves for the rest of his life. And the dad was there being proactive to have him, you know, bring the need out to ensure that his baby girl will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. It was it seemed like a really roundabout way. Not sure if the dad did it on purpose. Maybe he was just being kind of petty that his daughter was moving on, becoming a woman, not being his little girl anymore. Not sure, but it worked. You have a face. A I'm face. thinking of what I'm going to be like when our daughter starts dating. I think I'm going to be hell on wheels to whoever tries to date her and let that some bitch try to sneak and date her and not say nothing to me bad boys too will occur <laughs> you think you'll be so critical of them you're already critical naturally <laughs> like someone who's dating her which is going to be many many years from now <laughs> you're gonna like nitpick everything oh, he's looking at me wrong he's not standing up straight look how he's walking did he shake your hand? Did he give you a hug? Did he greet you right? Weak. I'm not going to be that. I'm just, I need to know, can you fight? Can you protect her? And what is your intention? Because if your intention is just to get some cheeks, and you know. It's like, I mean, let's call it back to the movie Hitch. That's one of the greatest movies ever. You know, is your hand up? That means I'm trying to be friends. Too low, I'm just trying to get some ass. If you're just trying to get that, that hand going to get broke. See, he is going to judge by the handshake. Now, look. <laughs> now, I'm many ethnicities. I am Samoan. I am Hawaiian. I am Dominican. I am Native American. And I am Creole. And going, saying all to say, Growing up in Samoa, seeing how dads are to boys who want to date their daughters. You know, a lot of Samoan girls are little badasses. I, I'm going to have to be that way. Like, are you going to challenge me? <laughs> I'm gonna be, if we have a boy, I'm going to be the same way. Like, oh, you. Okay. You going to be the man? All right. So you resonated with Tomo's dad. Of which course. Is like you were resonating with him. I resonated with him and I resonated with Junichiro. <laughs> I just will say that Tomo in many instances was annoying me in that episode, but... I thought she was really good. I thought the voice actress was doing really no, well. No, 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 no. The voice... 
frustrated. The voice actress was perfect. The character was well, annoying. What I mean was... As a character, that can be annoying, but to me, I thought that the performance was really good to not to not have Tomo annoying. They are, there have been instances where I've read a manga, watched the anime, and the anime annoyed the heck out of me. And I was disappointed because when you're reading, you are, as a reader, is interpreting the scene. You are imagining how that person is saying it. And when that anime just ruins that picture, it's like, oh. But in this one, mwah, it was good. It could have been annoying. I'm not going to lie. It could have been. It... I think it was a good love story overall, like the show. I'm I'm actually very sad that it's done because I really grew attached to these characters. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, before there was ever an anime, I remember Lehua saying that she wanted me to read the manga because she said, I'm going to love it. It was that and, um, uh, was it? He told what, me. What's a koi? Oh. Is that what's a koi? Love is hard, is, uh, hard for Otaku, and then there's a couple other things, and I finally got around to reading it, and then seeing the show, and then really falling in love with the characters, and I'm sad to see it go. You know, it's something to me where we get shows that are this good, this quality, and they don't get to last long. Mm-hmm. Like this, for Emiya, uh but we get other shows that, to me are very, in the grand scope of things, stupid. Like, um, Kaguya-sama, Rent-A-Girlfriend. Rent-A-Girlfriend is gutter trash. But I I enjoy the train wreck. I'm here for the drama. But I say that because that keeps going. Kaguya-sama keeps going on and on. Uh... Other things like what's that one? Uh, some someone wants to hang out. That show is so annoying. Oh yeah, and, the name I, of that one. you know what? It's so bad. I don't even want to think about it. But you know, those kind of shows last so long when the premise could easily be wrapped up in five to ten episodes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But something like this, which is wholesome you know it just it wraps up in 10 and 12 to 13 episodes and just i'm just sad which is why a lot of us who have read the manga are disappointed feel like they're being jipped because we know there's more content yeah and as michaela says we know there can be more episodes but they shortened it yeah so i'm like praying that it's gonna have the same Thing that Hormia has, where the missing chapters are going to be shown. If you haven't seen Hormia, you need to go watch it. If you love uh, Tomo Chan as a girl, uh, very different because it's more of a serious ro- uh, rom- It's not a rom com, it's a romantic story. Mm-hmm. I would highly suggest going and um, watching and reading Hormia. If you're looking for other like romance love stories to check out, uh, What's a Koi, Love is Hard for Otaku, if you want a rom-com that will make you laugh as much as Itomi Chan, probably that. Mm-hmm. What's a Koi is good. Uh, if you want one that will break your heart, then uh, The Lie You Told in um, September. Oh, April. It, Wasn't it in April? One of them. It, that was a tragic story. That That one hits really hard. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's more. I can't think of the names off the top of my head. There's a lot. But there's a really, (laughs) there's a lot of good things. And I'm glad that this show did so well. I honestly think that the reason that it was short is because they, the develop, not develop, we're not talking about video games. The the studio that made the adaptation, the anime adaptation, probably didn't think it was going to do that well. And, it was that good. It was that good. Sure. 
is I'm wondering what we're going to have next season to fill that gap. Maybe at some point we'll get an announcement for um, My Dress Up Darling because that was also wholesome and we have not gotten more of that. Hopefully, okay. We here's need a, he, to get more of My Dress Up Darling. Yes, but I have a recommendation for you guys. If you want something that is equivalent, and I hope that this eventually gets a adaptation. An anime adaptation because I believe the manga has finished. A hundred chapters is over. And I was really sad. It gutted me. Um Hitomi is shy or it was a Hitomi Town is shy with strangers. It is so freaking good. It is so wholesome. The main character is basically Tomo, but shy. <laughs> it has RBF. Real bad, but it's such a sweetheart. It's so, oh my god, I was so the ending just hit me so hard. <laughs> it's so good. I'm just I'm telling you, just the Tommy Chan is Shy with Strangers. That is really good. And another one that is getting an adaptation. I don't know when it's coming out, but uh Kubusan will not let me be invisible. Is also really, really good, really wholesome. So check those out. Nice, nice. Now, in Tomochan is a girl. I oh, we're still I, going. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was refreshing the ending because well, no, no, no. I mean, I'm I'm still ready to go. I just know she's getting louder. So. Oh, okay. No, no, no. We can keep going. We can keep going. I just, you know. Our daughter, whenever we're recording and she wants our attention, she does things to disrupt what we're trying to do. So, so I was just, I just wanted to say that was refreshing because in a lot of rom coms, when they get together, when they're finally a couple, it becomes official. It's like a very romantic scene, while this one was, it was very, seemed like friendship. Plus romance, like they're so happy that they're going to be together as a couple, but they're still friends. Like, like they still treat each other like friends, but now they hug and then they kiss. And Tomo kissed him. Can we talk about that? Yes. Yeah. So this is where the competitive comes in because Tomo was going to ask him to be her boyfriend, but then he's like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait! Can you be my girlfriend?" And she's like, "What?" I wanted to ask you. He was like, well, I'm supposed to ask. She's like, who said? And then she kissed him. She won up him. Her competitive shined. Oh, yeah, it was. So even though they're a couple, they still are like that. So I thought that was refreshing. And it, it really put a bow on um, the show. It, it put a bow on the show. It put a bow on the story. And uh, I, I think if it were to continue... You know, or even if the mangaka decided to continue uh, Tomo-chan, it would have to be a spinoff that oh. would need to... I would actually like to have a spinoff about Misuzu. Oh, for sure. I think her... Because everyone got a resolution, mm -hmm. but her, she didn't get a resolution. I mean, she wasn't really a player, but there was a guy who liked her. And it didn't really go anywhere. And I'm like, I would like... She had her priorities. It was not romance. <laughs> I kind of got the impression that she did want to be loved with when she asked Junichiro if he loved her. Oh, yeah. She wants to have like a sense of purpose with someone else that wasn't Tomo because she felt like she was being distant with Tomo. Like she was losing that friendship. And she's like, well, if I'm not friends with Tomo, like, what? Why live? And then the guy came along, asked her to go out. She's like, oh, maybe I can find a purpose to live with you. Or maybe I wouldn't be so bored with life. Because <laughs> she can always find purpose on her own. It was more like, <laughs> will you make life fun? <laughs> I think he would be good for her. I think he would go out of his way to make her happy. And I think they would be a good couple, and I would actually love to see that be turned into a manga and eventually an adaptation. 
Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is something. You know, if the mangaka ever re- watches this episode, or this episode of Paw, um, or if the producers of Tomo-chan is a girl, watch this. I would like to see that. I mm-hmm. think you could continue. I mean, Carol and and what's my call it? They don't need one. I don't think it would be that interesting with Carol. Nah, not really. They're they're solid. That story. Yeah, but I, you know, but as far as um, you know, Misuzu, I would love to see it for sure. So, and would you want the same studio uh, that yes. did Tomo to yes. Hitomi? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I would like. To have, if I were to pick a voice actress to voice its homie, I would honestly want it to be Lexi Naito. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because we're going to have her on the show. I'm saying that. Spoiler, people. I am saying that because I think she is a phenomenal voice actress. She really does well. At selling the tomboyish, easily frustrated, but ultimately great, good-natured girl. Mm. And I think she could really bring Hitomi to life. I would love to see her as Hitomi. And the guy who voices Junichiro, I wouldn't mind having him as Usa. Oh, I think it would be great. Same combination. Okay. They, I mean, think about it. Think about it. I know we're we're still going, but think about it. They have great chemistry with their lines and delivery. True. I think I think it would be great. That is true. And he's a phenomenal voice actor. I know we were surprised about hearing him in some other animes. We're like, what? He's so good. Like. We're, yeah, I mean, we we watching. We finally got around to watching Blue Lock, and I know we're late to it because everybody else is like, "Oh, this show is so amazing." We're late to it, but we've already said it before. When people talk too much about the trending popular thing, it pushes us not to want to watch it. Same thing with video games; it makes us not want to play it. And it's just because some things that we have dived into because of other people constantly hyping it ultimately be it ends up being a big letdown disappointment yeah and in this case they weren't wrong about blue lock blue lock if you love if you haven't watched kuroko basketball you need to go watch it you need to watch that one it's on netflix watch it in english oh my god it's so good chef's kiss so good you will be t- you will feel like you're watching and in the game. Now Blue Lock give is the only other at like sports anime that we've watched that made us feel the same way we felt when we were watching Kuroko's basketball. Super high. It is so good. And if you're an athlete, like she's an athlete. She fully vibed with all of it. I'm not really an athlete. I'm more of a martial artist, but I completely vibe with it. So definitely check both of those out. Mm-hmm. Evolve yourself and Evolve. check out Kuroko Basketball and Blue Lock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you guys have any recommendations for romance, rom com, sports, anime, manga, let us know. Whatever platform you're listening to this pod episode on, let us know. You can also reach us on social media. I'm available on all platforms at Telehula Superfina. I'm available on all platforms as well at Mikhail Casanova. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this podcast, you know, or any of the other episodes that we've done, then definitely, you know, if you're listening to it on any platform, leave a like, a rating, you know, comment, you know, interact with the polls that we put out and uh, let us know what you think. If you're watching the video version on YouTube, then d- again, let us know what you think. And and also we're going to start, I think we should start streaming some of these episodes and we were actually talking about that yeah. um, before we started recording this, especially now that we can stream to 
uh, Instagram, we just got to figure it out. But eventually TikTok, because that's ultimately going to be one of the outlets that we want to stream to as well. Mm -hmm. We could probably could have streamed this one to TikTok as it is. But, you know, um, just let us know. Because the show can't get better if we don't get feedback for you. Because, like I said in other episodes, we got the equipment, we got the camera, we got the audio stuff, interface, we got the software, we got the topics, we got us as your hosts. But without your feedback, there is no way to improve the show. So if you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, also let us know. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a negative dickhead about it, then you know what? I'm sorry for you, or I'm happy for you. You pick whichever one you want, because that's all you're going to get from us. <laughs> all that being said, uh, let me talk to you. Yeah, I'm signing out. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Laters.